so it's been a long time coming. Um, can you believe it? I actually waited close to two years for this keyboard. So let's jump straight into the unboxing and see exactly if this keyboard is worth the hype. Okay, for those of you who are new here, my name is Glenn and I'm a small creator here in Sunny Singapore and I make videos about consumer tech, cameras, keyboards and stuff. And today we're going to check out a very cool keyboard and it's called Thermal and it's made by a keyboard company called Rama Works. Um, although lately they've been served up with a bunch of drama in the keyboard community, which I'll share my thoughts on this later. If you ask me, um, my short and quick opinion is that, you know, when it comes to keyboards, I feel like their products are one of the best design in terms of form and aesthetics. Um, I really enjoy the industry design of the Ramaworks brand. In fact, this is my second keyboard from them. My first keyboard was the U80. So this is my first keyboard from Ramaworks. Uh, this is the U80A Sequence 2. This is a 80% keyboard and I really like the you know, very industrial look with the curves at the side of the keyboard. Along with the GMK Mono Kai, you know, keycaps, um, I think this dark theme is, is something that's really my kind of vibe. And you know, there are also a lot of small details at the back of the keyboard as well. Yeah, so this is my first keyboard from Ramaworks, the U80A, and then the Thermal, it's my second keyboard. And you know, when it comes to sound and typing experiences, which are critical to how a keyboard is perceived, there are definitely better keyboard model and brands out there for sure. And you know, if you're new to this keyboard hobby and you don't know what I'm talking about, let me give you a basic idea of how the custom keyboard hobby works. So again, like any consumer product, whether it is a watch or a bicycle, you know, a keyboard serves a basic function. And the fundamental function is to allow users to, you know, type and input keys. But then just like how you can modify the exhaust of a car, or change out tires for a better performance. The keyboard can also be modified as well to increase the comfort of typing and you know the sound that you hear and also arguably the performance of a keyboard because if you have well looped switches that are very smooth it can increase your typing speed and therefore increase your productivity. So a keyboard is quote unquote graded based on three subjective things. The look of the keyboard, the typing experience, they call it flex, you know, or how bouncy it feels. And lastly, of course, the sound, whether it is that clacky sound signature or that, you know, thorky acoustics that you're looking for. So back to this keyboard, uh, this is the Thermal Sequence 2, a 60% keyboard that I paid, you know, 430 US dollars for, and it comes, you know, without switches and keycaps. So only the case, PCB and plate is included, which is kind of like the brain and body of the keyboard, if you will. So you have to buy your own switches and keycaps based on, you know, your preference. And that is why custom keyboards are so expensive once you go down the rabbit hole. And if you've heard a little bit about custom keyboards, you'll know that there are different keyboard layout and sizes, you know, from 40% to 60% to 75% to, you know, like TKL and full sizes. This thermal keyboard is a 60% keyboard that looks similar to a Japanese keyboard called the HHKB, which is co-developed by a computer scientist that, you know, wanted to make one that minimizes movement from the home row position. So if you look at a HHKB keyboard, the usual caps slot key is now replaced by the control key which makes it easy for programmers to code since the control hotkey is used very often um, you know in coding I suppose. I've never owned a HHKV keyboard um, or a 60% keyboard. I guess with custom keyboards, you know, a lot of people like myself have a small obsession with collecting, you know, different sizes, different keyboards. After all, it's really the fine line between seeing it as a tool or seeing it as a collectible. Personally, for me, it's leaning towards more of the collectible side. But enough of the talking, you know, let's get down into building this keyboard and show you the finished build of the Thermal by Ramaworks. Okay, so right now we're going to build our keyboard. So, you know, it looks very messy and there's a lot of parts, but actually building a keyboard it's very simple so there's six main parts you know when it comes to a fully built you know custom keyboard which you can see right here my iron 165 so the first one is your keycaps and then the second one are your switches so basically you have your linear clicky you know different type of switches there's just so many types of switches and then you have your stabilizers uh, my stabilizers are deconstructed right now because i'm trying to loop the stabilizers so that it is um, you know smoother and it will sound nicer and these stabilizers are basically for your you know longer keys like your space bar your shift, your enter, your backspace on a regular keyboard. And then the fourth one is your printed circuit board, which is kind of like the brain of the keyboard. And then the fifth one is your plate, which is, you know, kind of like the support for the switches to go on to. And then lastly is your case. 
Okay, so let's get down to building the Thermal 60 by Rama Works. So this is actually a very simple keyboard build. You know, for my switches, I'm not lubing them. These are stock switches. And these are the Arco Lavender Purple switches that I, um, I'm trying out. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tune and then loop the stabilizers and then put it onto my PCB. Okay, so I finished, you know, uh, fine-tuning and lubing my stabilizers and I've attached them to my printed circuit board. Uh, but the first thing I want to mention is that before you start building your, you know, custom keyboard, you do is always test your printed circuit board to make sure that, you know, the brain is functioning. Um, you know, properly. I have like, you know, experiences where, you know, I built my entire keyboard, you know, I was very excited. And then when I plug it in, I realized that one of the, you know, keys are, you know, it's spoiled. So I have to request for another PCB to be sent over to me. The second step is actually to attach the spaces to connect the plate to the PCB so you can put your switch on. So if you look at the PCB closely, I know it looks complicated, but it's actually not. So all of these are basically your switches, your switch key, right? Then you have this parts, you know, where you can see that they're obvious. A screw hole so these are places where you are supposed to attach your spacer so that you know your plate can go on top of the PCB so this is arguably kind of like the most difficult step because you have to coordinate you know the spacer underneath and then you have to tighten uh, the screw under the PCB so the space on top and then the screw underneath So the spacers are installed on top of the PCB, so what you're going to do next is to take the plate which is right here and then put the plate on top of the PCB. Okay, so we're almost halfway into building this thermal by Ramaworks. Um, stabilizers go on top of the PCB and then the plate go on top of the PCB and the stabilizers. And then the next step is fairly straightforward, you just have to put in all your switches. So I've attached all the switches onto my PCB and plate. Um, this is how it looks from the back and this is how it looks from the top. Then all you have to do is now connect the daughter board to the case and then you just put this onto inside the case. So the next step in the thermal build is to install gaskets around the edges of the top case. So these are the poron gaskets. So the gaskets or the foam pads are installed on the edges of the top case. So now all you have to do is attach the plate and PCB onto the top part. So the PCB and plate is now attached to the top case. And the final step is obviously to put on your keycaps, but before we do that, we want to attach the bottom case and the daughter board back onto the, you know, top case. Okay, so the daughter board is connected to the USB-C cutout. This is kind of an extra step, you know, to link this small little brain with the bigger brain, the PCB of the keyboard. So when you plug in your USB-C cable, then you can start using your keyboard. So just like this, very simple, connecting the daughter board onto the PCB via this connector here. So when that's done, the final step is to put on keycaps. So this is the finished build, Thermal by Ramaworks, a 60% keyboard along with GMK808 keycaps. I think it looks amazing. Uh, obviously very different from the Iron165 you see here, uh, which is a very dark theme colorway. This is uh, with a splash of color. So let's cut to the sound test. So this is the finished build, the Thermal 60% keyboard by Ramaworks. Personally, I love the aesthetics um, of this keyboard. I think it looks really unique as a keyboard, you know, with the cutout sides and the plate just showing through the middle of the case. And, you know, adding on the HHKB layout, it makes it very different from the day-to-day -day keyboards that we see. So I think Rama's products are, you know, really well designed and the industrial look is something that I can really vibe with. And I'm not sure if I remember correctly, um, the company seemed to be inspired after Supreme in the same vein that products are fairly expensive and are in very limited releases. But, you know, recently the company have been swept up with a lot of drama in the community 
If you search on Reddit, you'll find multiple posts from customers about the lack of customer service. And for us, when it comes to group buys, we all know that there will be a long waiting period, uh, which is really how things were back then, you know, in this hobby between 2020 and 2021. But many customers are complaining that there has been a lack of updates and how the delay is unacceptable given that, you know, group buys these days for other brands fulfill delivery within a couple of months. I know a lot of people actually ordered the Kara keyboard, which was their most affordable product line. Until today, it hasn't been shipped. So my opinion is that, you know, as much as this keyboard looks freaking awesome, I wouldn't recommend you to, you know, get it unless you're willing to splash your cash in the aftermarket so that you don't have to wait for a very long time. These days, we get really well-priced products from brands like Quirty Keys or Iris Lab or even our local Singaporean brand Monoke. They actually came up with a, you know, standard TKL keyboard, a fully built keyboard, retailing for only 189 Singapore dollars. And the best part is that you don't need to wait for like, what, two years to get something that you want to use uh, right now. So there's so many options uh, in the market today, you know, with different brands and different designers. I mean, Thermo is still a very nice keyboard and Rama works as a brand. It's a very good designer brand. They make really, really nice products. But I think waiting two years to get a keyboard that you like right now just doesn't really make sense anymore unless you're willing to, you know, just buy it off the aftermarket. So hope you enjoyed today's video and learned something about, you know, keyboards. If you did, I would appreciate you dropping a like on this video and leaving a comment down below. As always, thanks for watching. You know, make sure you check out the rest of my videos on my channel and I'll see you guys in the next one.